Welcome to the first session of MVP's Stocking Your Digital Pantry series. Thank you so much for joining us for Optimizing Virtual Conversations. In the new world we're living in, how we show up virtually has never been more important. You're in the same role, on the same team, in the same network, and probably in the same organization. But most critically, even during a global pandemic, you are facing some of the same expectations to deliver results. The fancy virtual tools make it look seamless, but if we don't consider the art behind our virtual encounters, we'll burn out faster than we can say Zoom. The fact is we have the responsibility to design our virtual lives with care and the future health of our companies in mind. Most of us are in brand new territory, and while some of us are already pros at working from home, gathering solely in the virtual space as a group is uncharted territory for almost every organization on the globe. We are here today to help you stock your digital pantry. Recently, the New York Times put out a great article about stocking your food pantry during this time of quarantine. So we thought we would share our research and facilitation expertise our own way for you. We want you to feel purposeful, energized, and genuine. Whether you're tasked with presenting to the board, hosting an important offsite, or simply participating in a weekly meeting. First, we're gonna talk about your acting career. No, but really, you're on camera now more than ever, but you've likely never been trained to deliver or receive a message via camera. We're gonna give you some guidelines. Second, we'll cover what we call mise en place. The setup, the ingredients, and the methods we need for a successful virtual meeting or a successful virtual gathering. And we will also go over the difference between the two. Last, we'll give you a surefire way to conduct a successful virtual meeting. Let's get started. As coaches and graphic facilitators, we consider personality preferences, blind spots, strengths, emotional intelligence cues, and cultural differences when we present at a meeting or to any type of audience. When email swamped the scene, nobody knew how to navigate and there were a lot of unnecessary faux pas. As a population, we put little to no effort into pioneering etiquette, tone, style, or taboos. We don't want this to happen again. We're facing the added stress of appearing on camera while expected to deliver the same quality of work. First thing, test your background. You can log on before the virtual meeting starts to test both your mic and your camera. The virtual backgrounds from your tool are distracting for meetings, but so is the corner of your closet. So please try to make sure you're in a space that is very professional. Make sure your frame is clear, contrast with either texture or color, and try to have more than one color behind you. And please don't dress in the same shade as your background. Lighting. Always have your lighting in front of your face, not above or behind you you risk looking like an interrogation victim or a shadow. Eyeline. When you're speaking, try your best to look into your camera. When you're listening, you can look at the person speaking on your screen. Relating. Our periphery and spatial intelligence are optimally designed for our social nature. Unfortunately, in the visual world, we can barely pick up body language, micro expressions or reactions to our delivered message. To top this, we have group muting, microphone delays, and note-taking delays. In neuro-linguistic programming, the statement goes, our message is only as good as how it is received. So how do we compensate? Here's a tip. Have a colleague take a picture of what you look like in a virtual meeting. Make sure you're resting and relaxing your face. We are artificially forced to listen by staring at a screen, and this is difficult to bring awareness to. But the success of our rapport building and our connection virtually will depend on it. And how we manage ourselves and manage the meeting is crucial. Soften your glance, but not your attention. Mel, did you know that introverts are most likely to pick up written communication over face-to-face, thus making it a little bit more difficult for them in a Zoom meeting or a Microsoft Teams. Did you know that extroverts have an easier time improvising and thinking as they speak? They're much more comfortable on camera. 
So how does an on-camera communication feel for your personality preference? Every actor who has studied the craft knows the most successful scenes incorporate what they like to call business. Simply put, while they're speaking, they're usually doing something with their hands that helps them be more natural on camera. Let's put this in context of speaking to your first crush. Most of us were lucky enough to have this experience over the phone. Why lucky, you say? We could pace nervously, run our fingers through our hair, crack our knuckles, or even fix a broken doorknob while building rapport. This multitasking has the subliminal effect of easing the flow of our thoughts and outputting a more natural delivery of our message. Mel, that brings us to our mise en place. Number one, is it auditory or visual? Consider using a blend of auditory and visual communications throughout the day for your meetings. This will help the communication flow and also give your eyes a rest. Consider when conference calls would make more sense than a Zoom or Microsoft Teams meeting. Deliberately decide which types of meetings are required to be visual and always give your participants an option of auditory. But please make the expectations of the meeting very clear upfront. Here's a tip. If you have a mandatory visual requirement, turn off your gallery mode and use your speaker mode so you can notice who's taking up the meeting airtime. Make sure you incorporate a 360 degree opportunity to your entire group. Number two, is it a digital gathering or digital meeting? How do we maintain our stamina after hours of forced camera contact with our colleagues? And how will the nuances of our work relationships change? if we can't have casual conversation on the way to the conference room or at the coffee machine. Silicon Valley is noticing data and telling us the good things about office politics lessening during this time. But there's also an upside to our relationship web at work. We build trust through this elaborate web. So what are the two pantry items that we recommend for completely different results? Number one, a digital meeting. Digital meetings are intentional meetings to achieve a specific goal or agenda. These take the place of in-person meetings, usually in booked conference rooms, more formal and very professional. This is basically your pasta and rice, your staples in your pantry. The other is digital gatherings. These are more informal meetings, but still very significant. These take the place of these spontaneous coffee break type meetings. Encourage geographic variety, design and multitasking when thinking about these normalizing behaviors by intentionally trying to eliminate the feeling that everyone is behaving on a screen. These meetings we consider the spices and the flavoring. Here's a tip. When you designate a digital gathering, encourage participants to use their mobile devices so they can move around and even go outside. Patrick Lencioni in his Death by Meeting talks about the importance of five minute meetings he recommends doing standing up. This is the spirit of a digital gathering. It encourages a more social element within the workday. Successful meetings have always been at the crux of a successful organization. The most effective leaders navigate meetings thinking not only about content, but about form and follow up. How we organize and facilitate our virtual meetings will separate the good companies from the great and drive better results. Mary, let's save more mise en place for another time and move to the most desirable virtual meeting structure. Sounds good, Mel. Maybe our favorite part of adding purpose and collective meaning to virtual meetings is what we call the icebreaker. This is an opening exercise that changes regularly, that centers and unifies all the participants. Talking about the weather or commuting doesn't translate virtually but our emotional intelligence relies on the tone setting pre-meeting that's often made up of small talk. Some of our favorites include sharing a picture ahead of the meeting to talk about for 30 seconds, sharing an object in the room that has meaning for you and why, or sharing the chorus of your theme song for the day ahead of the meeting, or having everyone graphically record one word to describe their energy level on a shared whiteboard. There are hundreds of ideas, but you want to start with something. It will seem clunky when you're pre-planning, but this works wonders in practice. Act one will be your organization stage. 
It's important here to incorporate some of the shared graphic recordings of topics so that you can capture the essence of the meeting. We propose a live agenda. A meeting facilitator or co-host can ask participants to vote or prioritize topics. This sparks collective meaning making and makes the explicit implicit. If this is a digital gathering, Act 1 can be a dashboard for participants to express topics that didn't get covered already share industry intelligence, or move topics to a different collaboration platform, such as Slack. Next is Act 2. In the hero's journey, this is the all is lost moment. As coaches, we like to train people to facilitate healthy conflict and get rid of stagnant tension. Act 2 is where this should happen. We recommend setting this up as a challenge round in virtual breakout groups to facilitate further collaboration and conversation. This also promotes a degree of intimacy. And it's a more democratic approach to collecting thoughts. It's casual, a safe zone, and we can challenge each other outside of the one big room. Ding ding, this is unique to the virtual world and is a wonderful element to virtual meetings. The only time breakouts happen in real time meetings is when the stakes are high and something is urgent. So this gains us another one of the great requirements for a successful meeting, raising the stakes. Or in other words, Mel, giving other people a reason to care about what's important to you in the meeting. You always want to summarize, synchronize, and resolve. The virtual recording tool is recommended here in Act 3 so everyone can see what resolutions or action steps have been agreed upon. The more graphic recording and facilitation we can incorporate into these meetings, the more punctuated and productive they will be. Instead of the participants writing in their own individual notebooks, we can double check in Act 3 that all the participants got the same message and follow up action steps. Here's another tip. While you are conducting your three-act meeting, have the co-host mute all participants, and if needed, take the time to break away for a quick bio break or coffee between Act 2 and 3. Please announce this ahead of time during the icebreaker stage and introduction. This avoids the embarrassing single case of an accidental muting mishap like you may have seen on a very recent Saturday Night Live episode. We hope your digital pantry looks better stocked and organized. We have more to share in the future, including our favorite digital tools and tips for layering them to build better virtual meetings. We truly believe that carefully crafting your virtual work environment to include these rituals and best practices will form the bedrock to make you more agile and resilient now and into the future. Thank you for your time. We look forward to seeing you soon and please know that we're here if you need anything at all.